Hey guys, Bama Guitar Dude here. So, uh, this video is a, another turkey hunting tip video where I want to talk about failures and disappointments in the turkey woods and how to deal with silent gobblers. There's <clears throat> been a lot of discussion on silent gobblers lately, so I want to give you some ideas on that. But first, let's start off with... Uh, how do you deal with failures and disappointments when you're turkey hunting? Well, it's much like life. There's always a lesson or a learning opportunity in every failure or disappointment. And in my opinion, that's the best way to deal with it. Um, you know, oftentimes included in a failure is something that you maybe have done pretty good. So. You know, um, we all have things that we need to work on. And uh, certainly with turkey hunting, there's so many things that can go wrong. And some of them are completely out of your control. I mean, a coyote busting into your setup or, you know, um, a lightning thunderstorm rolling up and running a bird off. I've even had, when I was hunting Fort Hood, I had a helicopter come into a field. I was calling the bird to me and a helicopter came in and landed. I mean, how, how do you deal with that? You just chalk it up to crap happening, you know, to you during a hunt and you just, you move on, you know, and look forward to the next opportunity that you get to hunt a turkey. But um, yeah, so failures and disappointments are just part of hunting. I mean, we all miss at some point in time a nice deer or turkey. I've certainly missed my fair share. Um, and those are the ones that really sting. And unfortunately, they stay with you more than successes sometimes. But yeah, so failure and disappointment is just part of hunting. And you just got to learn to deal with it and focus on the positives, build on the positives, try to cover up your weaknesses, work on your weaknesses and move forward. But Regarding silent gobblers, I want to tell you that um, the quicker that you can break yourself from relying on a turkey gobbling, the better off you're going to be. This year has been one of the most vocal gobbling years in over 20 years of me turkey hunting. Let me say that again. In over 20 years of turkey hunting this year, they have finally become more vocal than I've ever heard them. So that tells you that the majority of my hunting has been on birds that are not very vocal at all. Maybe they'll gobble a handful of times or they don't gobble at all. So you have to learn techniques to deal with this. So how do you deal with it? Well, scouting, 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 scouting. People don't want to hear this, but you cannot get around the work of woodsmanship and scouting and learning your land and learning the routines of your animals whether it's turkey deer whatever you're hunting if you're a trapper what are your coons doing what are your coyotes doing i mean there will never be a substitute ever 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 for scouting and scouting a lot find those roost trees find those travel routes find those strut zones find those dust bowls hens dust and turkeys dust where are your dust bowls on your land? Do you know where they are? Do you know where the roost trees are? I mean, all, these are all questions you've got to ask yourself so that when birds or deer or whatever are silent, no problem. You go to these areas on your land, like um, a lot of areas where there's um, ridge tops or flats where the hens like to scratch and bug. Uh, corners of pastures back off away from traffic are often a lot of areas where turkeys like to stage up and hang out because they're not pressured. They've got clear visibility. Um, the important thing to understand about turkeys being silent is that as the season goes along and more leaves get on the trees, the more quiet they become. Think about it. They can't see as well. They can't hear as well. So if they gobble, then they're giving up their position to any predator, whether it's, you know, an animal, another animal, or human. And so they tend to not gobble as much. Well, 
You've got three weeks left in your season. What are you going to do? Clean your gun and put your calls up? No, you're not going to do that. You're not going to quit. You're going to go and lean on your scouting and be in these areas during certain parts of the day to knock off a silent gobbler. Don't quit hunting. You just got to deal with the silence and uh, develop yourself and become a better hunter. Um, you know, to me, if a turkey never gobbled, it wouldn't bother me at all. I would, I would not change anything that I do at all if a turkey never gobbled, okay? Get out there with some binoculars. Glass these pastures. I, I wear binoculars in the woods because a good pair of binoculars can see through the brush a long ways. Try it sometime. So, yeah, silent gobblers are no big deal. No problem. Don't be a gobble addict. Get rid of your desire to hear a gobble. Is it exciting to hear them gobble? Is it exciting to call to them and hear them gobble back to you and come to your gun barrel gobbling and strutting and all that? Yes, absolutely it is. But it's no less exciting taking a bird and walking out of the woods with a bird over your shoulder. That's the main goal of turkey hunting is to take a bird home with you, right? Okay, guys, I hope these tips help. I know some of y'all probably think I'm real hardcore, but if you're going to have consistent success with turkey hunting, you got to deal with failures and disappointments, and you got to deal with silent birds. All right, guys, take care.